Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements 2019 Layers and Layer Masks video, which also works in earlier versions of Photoshop Elements as well, we'll be doing this heart-shaped layer mask photo frame here, and also this collage of butterflies in the background for a customized background. Okay, let's get to it. This project here with this nice photo frame is made up of just a few basic elements. Right here we have, of course, a couple of pictures. Here's one picture in there, the frame. There's a different picture in the same frame as you can see here. I have a heart shape up here which has been modified to create this outline. And then in the background we have this big montage of butterflies. This actually is the reason why I made this whole project was to show you guys these butterflies which landed on the bush out in front of my house just a couple of days ago actually and I looked at that and I thought that would be a nice background for a photo frame for pictures taken from Mother's Day so there we go idea for a project. Now all of these butterfly pictures are contained in one group down here this is the part of the project that makes this a Photoshop Elements 2019 or even 2018 or version 15 as well project. Anything that has a group and that's beginning with version 15 and later you can make these groups. It's not necessary, but it's a real nice help if you have a lot of layers like this just to combine these down into one group, making it much cleaner in here when you're working on a project with lots and lots of layers, as you can see down here. Notice we also use a lot of layer masks on this project. Lots of layers and lots of layer masks and one layer group right there. Okay, see how this whole thing is put together? We'll start off by doing the background montage. I'm going to just close this file down here and I'll choose save and there we go get that out of the way and we'll start off with a standard file size here blank file I'll leave it at the basic default setting which is the Photoshop elements default size 6x4 resolution of 300 which is your printing resolution choose OK and there it is let me just dock that in right there and we'll zoom that in just a bit to fill the screen. Okay, next we need to bring in all the butterfly images. Let's go up here to File and Place. There we go. And a bunch of pictures of butterflies across the top up here. Now I'm using the Place command to bring these in so that they fit the page size. They're actually much too large for this size, but we'll bring it in on the Place command. Now you can download all of these images up here, and I have download links for these two photos as well if you want to work with those. Just take a look in the description for this video and you'll see a link for download project files. You can get all these things downloaded there. With the place command, we can only place one picture at a time. So we'll start off here at the left and I'll work over across to the right. So let's do that one and place. It comes in as you can see here as a new layer. And once it's been placed, just click on the little green check mark right there and that sets that into position as a new layer. We'll go ahead and we'll repeat this process for the rest of the images. Just file, place, and then do this one at a time to grab all these images. And I'll pause the video for a second here, bring all these things in, again, one at a time. Once that's done, I'll bring the video back up. And there we go. The next thing, we need to have a layer mask on each one of these layers. So click on your top layer here, click the layer mask, and you'll see that. Just come down one, and then just go down each one of these and click on that layer mask until they all have layer masks. We'll be using the layer mask to block out most of the picture and leave just the area around the butterflies. So it's real fast. Just walk your way down here and click the layer mask button for each one. All right. Now we're at our top one up here. Click on the layer mask side. Look for that light blue outline right there. This process will be the same for all of these layers. So I'll just do it up here on the top one. So there's your layer mask. We're on the layer mask side, light blue outline. Make sure that your foreground color is black. If it's not, just click down here, little icon there, and click that little double arrow, set that black. Grab your paintbrush, and then using a soft brush, I have mine set at about 100 pixels right now, the soft edge brush. Just come in here and brush around. Now we're seeing the other picture in behind at the moment, so let's fix that. I'm just going to hide everything else here and leave the background showing there's a white background. What you want to do is just make kind of a, 
a shape out and around a little ways away from the butterfly just like that and then paint in and fill in the rest of the layer with white. Just kind of paint around and fill that in. If you want to, you can go for a larger brush size for this part, but keep it about this size for around the edge. Want just a soft edge around that butterfly. Don't go in too close to the butterfly. Leave a bit of space. And on the other images, we'll do some a little closer, some a little further away, so you have a bit of variety in there. And then just paint out the background, as I'm doing here. And again, we'll be repeating this on all of these butterfly layers and what we'll end up with, so I'm just about done here, is just the butterfly and a bit of the background with a soft edge, just like that. Now once we have this, we can then move this around anywhere we want to, and that allows us to place this for a montage. Now, as I move this around, I'm seeing a couple little spots right here and right down here that probably should be cleaned out, but I think they won't even show. But just to be real nice and clean, let me just grab those just like that. There we go. Okay, so that's the idea. Just use the black paintbrush and paint out everything in the layer mask except for around the butterflies. You've done one layer, hide that, show your next layer, click to the layer mask, look for the light blue outline, and then using the black paintbrush, paint out and around that layer. About, about this big, you can kind of see the circle I'm making there, about that big around these butterflies. Okay, I'm going to pause the video again, and I'll go through and I'll do the same process here for all nine layers. And once that's done, then I'll bring the video back up. There we go. All nine layers set. And I'm on the bottom layer down here. Also a good time right now to go ahead and save the file. So right, untitled. Let's go ahead and give this one a name. File. I'll do a save. Let's call this one Butterfly Frame and choose save. The next step is to position each one of these butterfly pictures. If you think of this page as being divided up into three, three horizontal, three vertical, kind of like a big tic-tac-toe board, then put one of these pictures in each one of those spots. I'll just put this one right down here, like that. Go to our next one up here, and put that in the middle. Now where it overlaps like this, we can fix that with the layer mask. We want to show more of what's behind. We want to hide what's up here. So that just means to come in and do a bit more black painting up into this area on the layer mask. So click on the right hand side, look for that light blue outline, go back to the paintbrush, and then just paint on that layer mask right where that other butterfly is showing. It just kind of shows that butterfly underneath there. Okay. On to the next one. That's this layer. Do the same thing. Put them in the upper left-hand corner here like that. Now we need to show what's underneath again. So go to the layer mask side, back to the paintbrush, and then right where that butterfly is here, just paint out right over that. Again, I'm painting on the layer mask over here, and that just shows that part of that one. Okay, we'll just continue on. Put this one right down in the bottom middle here. And that fits in pretty well without overlapping anything, so that one's fine. Here's one for the middle of the page. There's a big overlap right down here. We can fix that again on the layer mask. And that's black. We'll just paint right over where that butterfly is. There we go. And continue on up. So right up in here. And if you want to, you can kind of Move these around a little bit so they're not exactly the same position each time. And this is going to be that spot. I'm just kind of moving them back and forth just a bit to put some variation here. I need to come in and maybe do a bit more on the layer masks in here to make them all show properly. just want to spread them out a little bit so they're not too much in the exact same perfect positions. This one's coming in behind this layer mask right here. That's that one. Notice if I click on the butterfly, I can actually move that one. That's because down here in the options, I have the auto select layer selected. It's very, very useful if you're working with this kind of a project. So to find the right layer, just click on the butterfly you want to fix. That's that one. So I get rid of this part and go to the layer mask on that side. 
and come back in and paint some more black on that layer mask and there we go. Okay, let's finish this off here pretty quickly. This is upper right hand corner. I'll put that right in there someplace and the next one is right here. And again, needs more layer mask work on this. So there's our layer mask and paintbrush and just show that one butterfly. This one has two butterflies, so we can choose either one you want or use them both. I'll use them both. I'll just put it down pretty low like that. It's a little bit of one showing in right down here. Back to the layer mask. And see if we can bring this butterfly in right on top there. There we go. And then we have two more up here. And I'll just put these in someplace just on the top like this, and we'll come in and show some butterflies in behind on this one. Again, the layer mask. And this time I'll come in pretty close to these butterflies. There we go. And let's just show that butterfly there and come in and show this one. And again, I'm still painting on this layer mask right here. That looks pretty good. And that took out one butterfly there. Let me just undo that. Let's just reverse the colors here. If you paint white, it shows. A little butterfly right in there. I'll leave that one on. And then back to the reverse colors to the black again. And our final butterfly right down here. Let's just find a spot that's kind of empty. Looks pretty good right in there. Or maybe up here. The right hand corner could use a butterfly. There's one hiding in the background. I kind of like this one better. So let's put that one right there. Okay, there's our butterfly background. Now at this point, if you are working in Photoshop Elements 2019 or 2018 or version 15, you'll have the layer groups up here. Click on the layer group like that. Here's your group. Click on your top layer. Come down to your bottom layer. Hold the shift key down. There we go. Click where the name is. And then drag it into that layer group. So they kind of just jumped in a little ways. They're now inside of this layer group. If I click on that arrow, I can collapse everything down and it just cleans up the whole page this way. Now don't do this until you've finished all this work. Now if you don't have elements 15 or later, if you have 14 or earlier, there's no group. It doesn't really matter. You'll just be having just a big long list of these different layers in here with the layer masks at the bottom of the project. It still works exactly the same. This is just a nice little plus if you have the later versions of Photoshop elements. Okay, let's now put our heart shape in here and then bring our pictures in. For the heart shape, we want a new layer. I always put a new layer in whenever I'm doing anything like this just to make sure it separates from anything underneath. Come down to graphics and in here we're going to scroll down until we find a nice heart shape. There are a few heart shapes in here. I'll point those out as we come to them. And it's one that I want to use. Here's kind of a nice one. It has a real rough edge. I've used that on occasion. It's a nice heart shape. But I want to have a hard edge on the heart shape. So I'll come down further. And there's some more hearts further down here. There we go. We have this outline one. We have this heart shape. And we have this one over here. We're using this heart shape. So click on that. That brings it into the page here. Now if you don't see any control handles, hold the control T keyboard shortcut down to show your control handles. We can now stretch this out until it fills the page properly. You want a little bit of space below and a little bit of space above like that. And I also want this wider. So we're going to pull this out so it's a wider heart shape just like that. Enough space so there's plenty of room to see our picture inside. You may want to adjust the shape a little bit once you have your picture here so you can see everything properly. And you can leave a little bit of space around. We're we'll doing a border on this and the border is going to be going over this. It'll be inside and outside centering it and we need some space for that. Okay, there's our basic heart shape. Choose okay. We still see our butterflies in behind. That's fine. 
You now go back to our layers and we can bring in our picture. File and place again. I have a couple of shots in here. I'll just use this one right there. Choose place. It'll come in on top. There it is. Just click that check right there. So it's on top. I'm going to make this just a little bit less opaque. Just bring the transparency down a bit here. And then we can reposition this. I can see the heart shape in behind. Now we need to make sure that we are covering up the whole heart, which is about, there. That's about as far down as I can come right there. That looks pretty good. That's a nice shot. Okay, let's put our opacity back up again. Take the shape and move this up to the top. So we're on top just like that. Now we'll be doing a, another layer masks down here. So let's click on our layer mask button. There it is. Go back up to this shape. Hold the control key down and click on the icon. That selects that shape right there. Let's now come down to this layer mask. I can actually hide that. And our layer mask right here. Have our selection black foreground color and what I want to do is I want to have white in here and black outside so let's invert this selection select inverse and you can see the marching ants border right here and also outside so this area here is now selected let's go to the paint bucket and just click in here and that fills that part of the layer mask with that black giving us the image inside of that layer mask. Okay, we now deselect that, so select and deselect. Now we need to put that border on here, and for this it's a little bit of a trick. Go up here to the shape, the shore shape again. There it is. And I want to put a border on this, so we'll use a layer style. Go up here to layer, come down to layer style and style settings, and stroke. Now you want to set this for center. We'll put the size at 50. It's a pretty thick stroke. You can see there's the thickness of the stroke right there. And over here where it has set color or stroke, click on that and just choose any other color you want. I'll just do a light blue in here. And there it is. There's that thickness of that stroke. And then choose OK. Now the reason for coloring it is just so that we can see it separate from the inside. It's a very, very important part of this step. It has to be a different color. You don't want to have black because the next step won't work. Up here on that shape layer, right click where the name is where it says shape one and choose simplify layer. What that does is it gets rid of that layer style and collapses that down. So this is now just a piece of artwork with black inside and blue outside. That lets us take our magic wand Come down here and make sure on the magic wand tool right there. Set that for new selection. Then just click into the black area that should select the whole black area right out there up against that blue edge. So that's now selected. Now we'll invert this selection. Select inverse. Now the outside is selected. That's the blue line and clear. Back up to layer and come down to new layer via copy. And what that gives you is just the light blue outline all by itself right there. So there is your border. We can now go fancy on this. Lots of ways of going fancy on your border. All you have to do is come down here to Styles. Lots and lots of options in here. Let's click in the top left corner. There you go. There's one option. Let's just undo that. Control Z to undo that. Is our next one and then control Z. One I used in the sample was right down here. Which I think actually works out kind of nice. I actually kind of like that. I'll do but control Z though. And anything in here you can use. Here's a plastic effect. Control Z. Let's do it in orange. Control Z. Here's a yellow. Control Z. Let's look at our neon effects. There you go. So lots and lots of options on how to colorize this border now that you have it. But we'll go back up here to the complex and we'll stick with that one right there. And there it is. Last thing to do, I want to make some adjustments in here on the values in this image. 
So back to our layers. I come back down to that photograph right here. And I'll put an adjustment layer on this layer. So go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer, levels. Where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask, make sure that that is checked. Choose OK. And now we can lighten or darken your image right here. I'm going to go a little bit darker. Let's bring our blacks in right there and bring our lights up. Maybe a little bit lighter now. Just adding in more contrast into the picture. It's kind of a low contrast picture. So a little bit more contrast in it. This is an easy way to really control your contrast. And I think that looks pretty good. There we go. So there's how I do a few things in here. We did that montage background there with those butterflies and use it as a background piece. We stuck it into a layer group, of course, using layer masks and put it in a layer group. Another layer mask on the photo to give us that heart shape. And then we did some shapes up here and some fun work up here to give us this interesting, very adjustable border. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button and of course also share with your friends. Just click on share and share through social media. If you haven't already done so, also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out any videos in the future. I've added something new to my channel. I've added a Patreon button. So if you want to also support my channel and support these videos, you can click on that Patreon button. And finally, if you want to learn everything about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training courses and there's a link right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.